Well, that's a good thought to begin with. Tell God how big his power is, because his power is what makes our lives worthwhile and blessed. It's, uh, it's going to be a good time when we all get together again. Churches can come to church and then worship together, but we are getting to you through WFEN. We're glad you're on today. This message this morning is preparing the heart for a right spirit. A right spirit is so necessary. What is it that motivates you, your spirit? It's a realm in which if you don't get into the right spirit, you will say and do the wrong, wrong things. So let me begin in the book of Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 1 through 3. Proverbs 16, beginning with verse 1. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. The thoughts take you into that spirit realm, that spirit realm that's speaking to you, guiding you, giving you a comfort level, or stirring you up in one way or another. The amplified translation of that says, the plans of the mind and orderly thinking belong to man, but from the Lord comes the wise answer of the tongue. He, gets, he puts into our heart that which is going to guide us spiritually in the things we choose to do or choose not to do. It's very important for us. In the book of Jeremiah, let me, let me go to Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, and the 23rd verse. These words, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Let me go on to verse 24. O Lord, correct me, but with justice, not in anger, lest you bring me to nothing. In other words, in other words, Lord, I want you to be tender with me because I, I want you to know my heart is with you, and God is always tender with those whose hearts are within them for God's glory and for our good. Man doesn't know what is best for his future. God does. If we only knew what God would like to see us accomplish, it would not be difficult for us probably to change some of our plans to adjust to make happen what God wants to happen. Even if God orders our steps, we don't have to obey. We can ignore them. We can do what we want to do. But if we do, we slip into a wrong spirit, a spirit that is not of him. Because if we do what his spirit directs, we will do his will for his good and for glory. Now, if God orders our steps, we don't have to obey. And I say that just to say that God does not take our will away from us, but our will should be aligned with his word. And if our will is aligned with his word, our spirit will be in harmony with God. That process is a powerful force in your life. Uh, turn with me to the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19 through 20. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in the hour what you should speak. In other words, the spirit. Spirit of God will minister through your spirit that identifies with him, and you identifying with God now speak his will, his purpose for all that is going on. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father who speaks in you. I wanted you to get that, the Spirit of the Father. Remember, the topic this morning is preparing the heart for a right spirit. Let me just say this. If you don't have a right spirit, your mind is not going to function the way it should because your mind responds to the forces of eternity, and God is the source of eternity. So it's a powerful thing that God begins to do in our lives. Man doesn't know what is best for his future, but we must let God direct our steps because he knows what is best for us and what is best for the kingdom values. Oh, what a... What, a, what a, a message is there. I could go on for a half hour just on that thought alone today. In Psalms, 
37, 23. It says, Psalm 37, beginning with verse 23, these words. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. In other words, you're listening to his spirit. You're tuned in with his voice. His voice radiates the spirit of God. And that spirit is a powerful force. It has the ability to change your pathway, change your plans, change your desires, so that when you do what he wants done, you get the benefits of his promises. That's for all of us. Even if God orders our steps, we don't have to obey him. Let me go on to that 24th verse. For though we fall, he shall not be, we shall not be, let me say it, start over again. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his stance. Who is that? A man who's walking in the way of the Lord. That's why I say preparing the heart for a right spirit, because if the spirit isn't right, it's what's motivating what's in your heart. In Matthew 10, 19 through 20, as we've, as we've looked at that before, but let me, let, me just, let me just go there with you today. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19 and 20 says, But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. The Spirit of your Father. Let me just tell you, nothing greater for you to desire than to walk in the Spirit of God. But you're not going to do that if you're not preparing your heart to receive His Spirit instead of your ideas. So often we are driven by anger because of what somebody else has done, jealousy because we see what others are doing, all kinds of things that stir a wrong spirit within us. And how important it is that we get aligned with the presence and the power and the Word of God because out of that force will come new dimensions of God's blessing for you that you need and you will rejoice in once it begins to flow into your life. If our minds are filled with God's plans, we will have his plans to draw from our resource, or in other words, our memory bank, the things that we have put into our memory bank. Let me just say that one of the values of studying the Word of God, reading the Bible, and you don't read it just to get two chapters read a day, and you read it real rapidly. You read it to receive it. You let it speak to you. You let it guide you. You let it encourage you. You earn, you earn a future by obeying what it says. And so it's very important that as you read the Word of God, it is not just a quick read-through. It is a study flow where you begin to understand the goodness that God has for you. And He has so much for all of us. So turn with me again to Jeremiah 29 Verse 11, these words. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. See, God says, I'm thinking about you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I read that verse frequently. You know why? I want to remind myself that I have God's heart working for me. His heart becomes my heart because I pull on him. I pull on his spirit. And out of his spirit comes his word, comes reminders of what he's promised, comes reminders of what he's accomplished through our past and into our future. And as we read all of that and study that, it builds faith within us, and strength comes out of faith, and strength will create a spiritual value in your life that will not be defeated by the fear of the circumstances around us. Circumstances will not discourage you. Circumstances will be taken care of by your trust in the Lord when you understand Him and when His Spirit is driving and correcting you. Now, in Jeremiah 29, 11, that I just read for you, he said, I know the thoughts that I think toward you says the Lord, thoughts of peace, 
not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. In other words, we know what to expect. When you've read that, you know what to expect from the Lord. It will be an uplift. It will be a direction that will provide future for you. God's Spirit communes with our spirit, but if we are listening to God's Holy Spirit, we don't get our directions, we get His directions. Let me just say that the directions that God gives you are aimed at blessing you, at lifting you up and strengthening you in all that you do. Our path, guided by the Lord, is a plan of victory and a plan of success and a plan of joy, not discouragement. Even though things that are discouraging may come to you, you will quickly see that God has a way to go around that circumstance and bring you into the victory that he promises out of his word. Over and over again, I've received that experience. And when I thought that I was going to be discouraged because of what was happening, I discovered that I was going to be encouraged because of the victory that I was about to gain. That spirit of God in you will take you to new levels without question. I read from the book of Luke. Let me go back to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 34 through 35. These words. Then Mary said, well, let me go back to verse 27. I want to I give a little background for the picture before I get into the point that I want to make. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Can you imagine Mary's idea and wondering, what's up? If, if I'm going to have something special among women, I, I better pay good attention here. Well, let me tell you, that's what we better pay attention all the time to the voice of God. Go on to verse 29. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what, matter, what manner of greetings this was. And the angel she was talking to said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Church, I want to tell you that walking in the Spirit of God will give you favor with the heart of God because it will guide your steps into the victory he wants you to enjoy and that you want to enjoy. Verse 31, And behold, you, Mary, will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus. Ah, this is all brand new to her. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to her. God is speaking to her. The angel is speaking on behalf of them. Behold, you will conceive your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Getting instructions. Let me tell you, any place God leads you, he will instruct you so that you're going to have a victory come out of it, not a failure. Verse 32, he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. In the great, we're still enjoying the kingdom of God. What he promised to Mary at that time is now happening to us in a whole new dimension under all different circumstances, but it's still his victory. Let me go on to verse 34. And then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? How am, I gonna, how am I gonna have a child if I've never had a relationship with a man? How is this going to happen? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. In other words, she was given the child by the Holy Spirit not by a man. Even though Joseph was her husband, he, they had not had that relationship that would bring forth a child. And now God is saying to her, I am stepping in, and I will bring forth the child that I want to bring. If God has our plan in his mind for us, then we must hear his plan. And if you're going to get God's plan, you've got to get tuned to his voice. How do you get tuned to his voice? You listen to his spirit. 
and his spirit identifying and communing with your spirit brings you into a position of light and understanding. And when you have the light on the word of God so that you understand his promises, you know how to believe, you know how to trust, and you move into an assurance of all that God has promised you. I, I, I look at all of this and I say, oh my, how great this is. How wonderful it is. You know, I can remember back in, the, in my years when I graduated from Bible college, my wife and I. And we left there and we went to a church in Waterloo, Iowa. And we were going there to help the pastor. And he was excited for us to come. We were young and, and busy and ready to do whatever we could. And so we, we moved to Waterloo and we stepped right in and the church didn't have a choir. So I immediately began to develop a choir and had practice and they were singing well. And they didn't have any instruments. They didn't have any musical instruments playing. So I, I discovered the people in the church who had instruments. And we had a band playing and making the, the music e even stronger than it was. And I can remember as we were there, I, 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 we, we had some rules from him. He said, you don't go out to eat with anybody in the church unless I'm with you. Well, what did that say to me? That said to me, he didn't trust me. The pastor didn't trust me, and here I am trying to help him. But I, as, I, as I kept doing what I did, I kept encouraging things, and it was, the church was growing rapidly, and I was only there for three months. That's all. Because I, I felt so uncomfortable. I felt as though there was no trust in me. And then I thought, no, that's not it. He's jealous because the people are responding to what this young man is doing instead of responding to this pastor who had been there for years. And I, I knew that I was in bad hands because I couldn't go out to eat with anybody in the church because he was afraid that I was getting too familiar with them. And I, I began to see as I was getting toward the end of that period of time, I said, Lord, this is uncomfortable. I'm not comfortable with this. He said, no, you won't be here long. I'm taking you to another place because this spirit is not right for future blessing. Okay. So I, I began to plan toward leaving. And on the, third, on the Sunday night of the third, end of the third month, the Sunday night, I said my farewell message and left. And after the meeting was over, a businessman in the church who had about five different furniture stores in different cities. He came to me because we wanted to go out to eat before, and I couldn't because I had to have the pastor with me, and that was his rule. And he said, now, he says, you're not here anymore. He says, we can go eat together. In other words, he saw a release coming to a wrong bondage that was not necessary. We went out to eat, and he said to me, where are you going? I said, I don't know. He said, you mean you resigned and you don't know where you're going? I said, yes. I said, I just know that my time is through here. And he looked at me and he kind of smiled and he said, well, I said, I, I know the Lord will lead my steps and take me where he wants me to go. Church, if you're walking in his spirit, his spirit will guide you to the best steps for your future. I can remember that night he looked at me and he said, you know, I buy a lot of furniture in Rockford. Rockford used to be a big furniture producing city. He said, I buy a lot of furniture. And he said, every time I go there, I think, we need a church in Rockford. He said, do you know where Rockford is? And I said, yeah. He said, uh, it's, it's a great place. And I wondered where he looked because I'd been to Rock Falls, not to Rock Ford. And so I said, I wonder what he was looking at. And then I looked on the map and I saw the bigger print for Rockford. Ah, okay, now I've got the picture. He said, you know what you need to do? He said, you need to go over to Rockford and take a look at that city and just see what the Lord says to you. And so I made arrangements with the divisional superintendent of the organization I was a part of at that time. And I said, let's meet at the post office at such and such a time and look the city over and see what you think the future holds. 
I met him at the post office. We began to look and see where the churches were that would be much like we were. Most of them were in the Rockford area. So we began to think about the Loves Park North Park area at that time. And, of course, that's where we finally started a church not long after that and took us time to build it up, but it grew and it grew. And, and how grateful we have been that God has guided our steps. But I have learned through the years that if I don't walk in the spirit of God, if I walk in the spirit of influences of other people who are not moving in the spirit of God, I can make a big mistake. And so I lean upon the spirit of God for everything I do. And as I pray, I say, Lord, is that your spirit? And he said, yes, I'm talking to you. This is what I want for you. That was 66 years ago that I came to this city. And you have to know when it is that God is moving you to a different situation. When, how does he do that? He does it by his spirit talking to your spirit. And your spirit feels comfortable. I knew I was out of place in that church that I was in. I knew that I was not going to get any place because there was jealousy there in his part, the pastor's part. He was afraid that this young upstart was going to overdo him. And I, I would have only blessed him the best of my ability. But he was worried. Let me just tell you, if you walk in the spirit of God, you get rid of the wrong forces that guide your steps. It will always be bigger than our plan for us when we walk in his power. So if we only think our plans, we will be planning way too small. You've got to say, Holy Spirit, what is your plan? What are you saying? And then when he begins to talk to you, you'll probably question at times. You say, you want me to do that? I I've been through that step many, many times. That's what you're expecting. And when he says, yes, fear leaves. I understand that's his process. That's a good place to go. Let me just tell you that if you have the Spirit of God guiding and directing you, you will have victory and you will be blessed. If you don't have that Spirit guiding you, you'll struggle in a lot of situations. Why? That's why I'm preaching to you today on preparing the heart for a right spirit that will guide you right, direct you right. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2 and 3. Let me go back to it. Proverbs 16, verse 2 and 3. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. We get to thinking we're right. But the Lord weighs the spirits. Ah, that's why we prepare the heart for a right spirit. Verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts. Thoughts will be established. There will be stability. There will be direction. There will be guidance. We think our thoughts are right until something happens to reveal God's thoughts. And then all of a sudden we say, oh, yeah, God's thoughts. That's what he's thinking. And if God is thinking in a particular direction, that's where you adjust and you get on track. Why? Because his plan is his plan for you and your plan for victory. That's his blessing. We only get his thoughts through the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit may be using the Word of God to bring some of those thoughts and some of those, I call the, the Bible our best weapon because we learn where our victory comes from here and what our blessing is, and we know what we should be going after and what our spirit should be built on. We begin to grow all of that, so we only get his thoughts through the Holy Spirit. That's why... Our relationship with the Holy Spirit is so vital. We're not just born again to say, I'm saved. No, we're born again to be guided by the Spirit of God. Just like he did for Mary before Jesus was born. She had to be assured that it was God speaking to her, all that was going on. So from what spirit does a thought come from? We have to decide what it is. If resenting someone is our spirit, that anger will diminish your future. You don't hold something against people, even though they have wronged you. We're to forgive them like God has forgiven us. We forgive them because we can't operate well in a life of victory when we are living in resentment. 
holding anger against somebody? Or what about the spirit of division where you, you're, you're, you're working in a situation where there's a division taking place and you're wondering which way do I go? That's when you need the voice of the Holy Spirit to say, go this way, go this way. And when we follow his voice, we move into his promised victory. That's where our joy comes from. Or if we're jealous, that pastor that I worked with for three months was a very jealous man because he thought I was outdoing him. He thought I was coming. And that was the least of my, my thoughts were just to bless him and strengthen him. It doesn't make any difference what your thoughts are. If they get the wrong idea, <clears throat> you've got to overcome that idea with the Spirit of God in you and walk in peace and victory regardless of what their attitude is. So you, do, you don't allow jealousy to get into your life. If you see somebody that's doing a better job of honoring the Lord than you are, say, I'm going to join you. I'll be a part of it. I'll praise the Lord with you. And you will find peace and victory in that. Our spirits can easily pick up on spirits from the world that we are in rather than the Christ that we are in. The world you live in has all kinds of spirits in it. And I've mentioned a few of them, jealousy and so on. And if you allow those spirits to begin to take over in your life because you think somebody else may be getting a bigger blessing than you, no, they won't if you do what God wants you to do. They will not get a bigger blessing than you. You deal with the right righteousness of God and the right spirit of God. In Luke, the ninth chapter, beginning with verse 50, let me turn to it. Luke 9 Verse, beginning with verse 50, these words. But Jesus said unto him, Do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. See, instead of feeling resentment towards somebody, he said, No, they're on the right side. They're on our side with us. If you're walking in the Spirit of God, he will join you with others of like spirit, and you will feel support and strength. Verse 51, now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. This is Jesus getting ready to leave and go back to heaven. And he sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. Oh, God is concerned about our spirits. Why? Because our spirits will either lead us into the victory that he has for us or it'll lead us into the victory that we want. And so often the one we want is not his plan. We must read the Spirit of God by the voice of the Spirit. And that's where the victory comes from. That's where the joy is. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. So we, he said, well, I'm not going to destroy. That's not what I'm here for. When Samaria did not receive Jesus, the disciples were ready to call down fire from heaven. They were ready to burn things up. We're going to get something going here. Be very careful. You, you don't get something going, but you get God something going. There's where the Spirit comes in. If you're walking in the Spirit, you will identify with His Spirit, and it will flow with you, and you will operate in it, and victory and peace will fill your life. So when Samaria did not receive Jesus, the disciples were ready to call down fire from heaven, but Jesus said, oh, no, no, that's not the way we operate. Two of his closest disciples, James and John, sometimes some of our best friends that know the Lord, love the Lord, but we listen to them say things. You measure their advice whether it fits the word of God or not. If it does not, even though they're Christians, even though they love the Lord, they're on the wrong track, and you don't want to walk on that wrong track with them. So, we are in victory. Let me turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I want to begin with verse 5. 
2 Timothy chapter 1, beginning of verse 5. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. How does it get there? By the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Oh, church, a sound mind, the power of the Holy Spirit. You begin to put those things together in a package, you have a blessed future ahead of you. But if you begin to make your own plans, going to destroy this one that doesn't do right and I'll take care of that one that doesn't do right. No, you let the Holy Spirit deal with those as you walk in Him. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Then where did He get it? The world we live in is where we get it. The things around us, a mind loaded with God's Word will look for His answers and will look for His Spirit to speak to us. I Time and time again, when I am about to do something, I stop and I say, Holy Spirit, is this your plan or is this my thoughts? And I have to tell you that very frequently it's just my thoughts. And I have to cancel my thoughts. And I pick up his wisdom. I pick up his spirit. And I walk in it because I know the joy of my future is in the spirit of God that I walk in. Someone comes from Southern California when it's 25 degrees and they think it's cold. Well, we think it's cold when it's near zero. So we have differing opinions from people in all kinds of things and even in spiritual areas. And if they are not just like we are, just love them. Because if you can love them with the love of the Lord, they will be pulled toward you because it's God's love, not yours. It's yours flowing through them by the Spirit of God. But as you do that, you influence those around you. Let me just say, wherever you work, you are an influence of some kind to those around you. How important it is that you walk in the Spirit of God so that He guides your every step. Let me just say to you today that if you're wanting the victory that God has for you, Follow his word, listen to his voice. Every now and then, give a little try and say, Lord, am I on the right track? Am I obeying you? Is this what you want? And if he doesn't, he'll say no. And he'll tell you what to do to get back on track. My desire for you today is prepare your heart for a right spirit that will guide your steps and determine your future. Shall we pray? Father, how we thank you for the power of your spirit. For it is that light and it is that strength that guides our steps in all that we do, in all that we work for, in all that we are praying for. We want your best for our nation. We want your best for our city. We want your best for our church families. We want your best in every dimension. So we ask you, Lord, let your Holy Spirit guide our steps. Let your Holy Spirit speak to me in all that I do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. God bless you abundantly.